English Forward presents. So nice when everything um, works well first time around, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, Zoom's usually pretty good. Yeah, it's usually pretty good. Yeah, they're excellent. Uh, thanks, Ben. I, I appreciate you being here today. Um, can we just kick straight off and get going? Sure. I just got done uh, doing a little story on y'all. Okay. I'll have it po posted probably, you know, half an hour after we're done. Okay, excellent. That'll be great. Thanks. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I must say I'm really excited to be telling you. I read through all your stuff and uh, just um, straight up, I'd like to introduce you to our audience. Um, okay. Today, we're going to be chatting to Sean Henderson, aka Satoshi Sean. Sean is the Chief um, Commercial Officer of Hellas Insurance Company, and he's worked with a number of cryptocurrency and blockchain com companies um, across various roles over the years. So welcome to the English Forward Podcast, Sean. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and um, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, um, I live in the United States in Texas. That's kind of the United States. Um, yeah. uh, grew up in, uh, in Europe um, when I was younger, and then we, we moved here um, from the East Coast originally. Been in blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency for, um, I mean, hardcore for probably about three years now. Uh, have a YouTube channel for Satoshi Sean, and we have a news YouTube channel, the Cryptopolitan, um, which we're, the news channel is just getting started. Uh, I've worked with uh, several projects uh, as an advisor, um, and my background before I got into uh, cryptocurrency was more in the traditional um, investment market, insurance, um, been an insurance agent, uh, and um, with mutual funds and, and different, you know, and, and investment platforms for probably about 20 some years before I got into this, uh, which when um, Hellas started out uh, as a decentralized insurance company, it really, uh, I saw a lot of the potential um, that blockchain could bring to the insurance industry because it's so, I mean, every, we all talk about banking and, and all these other legacy, you know, systems that are very, uh, not not transparent at all yeah, um but, right. but the insurance industry no one really talks about it. it's really really uh bad <laughs> and um i think blockchain you know brings a lot of that transparency um and really is uh is good for the consumer yeah it makes a lot of sense it's funny it's something that um everybody actually needs um well i suppose almost like a grudge purchase say but um you can't get away with not having it um, but as you say, there's there's not much transparency in that industry at all. So it's great to be, you know, I read a lot of um, the Hellas stuff and um, the background and gee, some of the ideas you guys have got are they're groundbreaking and they're great to, to see that that's actually going to be coming to the market. Yeah. And one of the things is uh, is with AI that we're using for our, uh, our claims, um, <clears throat> because you know, like I said, I've been in the legacy, you know, insurance industry and there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of money and a lot of uh, political. Um, I have just drawn a blank. Um, the laws are definitely skewed towards the insurance industry, not the consumer. Um, like when it comes to most claims, the insurance company has months, even after they've approved the claim, it's done. They can hold on to that money for a long period of time before they have to legally get you the check. Um, there's no reason for that when it comes to you because you're it's approved, you know, your claim is valid, but they're holding on to that money because they're still investing it. Mm. They're still making an you know interest rate on it until they have to le legally let it go. Um, whereas with Hellas, we're using um AI, so there's a simple claim. Um, as soon as the um, as soon as the claim is satisfied, then the AI would release the payment by smart contract. So for our, um, like travel insurance, you can literally, if you get to your destination, you get off the plane and they've lost your luggage, you can literally file your claim right there in the, uh, in the airport and get paid before you leave. That's it's incredible. You don't, yeah. You don't have to call Travelocity. You don't have to call your travel agent and yell at them. There's, there's nothing, 
you know, you can get your $500 or $600 that you got for your, with your travel insurance for your luggage right there. Yeah, it's amazing to think that you could actually shortcut that process because, um, I mean, certainly my experience is exactly as you describe it. It takes a while to get a claim um, processed and then actually get paid. So that would make a massive difference to the end user. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's funny, um, just a bit of fun. I, I, when I look through all your stuff, I see that um, you're a big fan of Star Trek. Yeah, so anything sci-fi, really. Star, yeah. Star Trek, Star Wars, definitely. Okay, cool. Are you like a fully-fledged Trekkie? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I, I, na I named my kids after Star Trek characters. Are you kidding? What are their names? Yeah, well, see, I had to do it, you know, kind of subvertly because my ex-wife was, you know, not having it. Um, so <laughs> Theodore Kirk, you know, for, for Kirk and uh, Alexander yeah. Brent. Ah, magic, man. Gee, that, that's awesome. You know, I've got a cousin that's a Trekkie and um, absolutely one-eyed. Eh? Gee, so, so single-minded about it. So I understand the passion and the enthusiasm. Yeah. And it's actually amazing because um, he goes on and on about how Star Trek predicted the future with all sorts of things in tech. Um, you know, touch screens, flip phones, voice inter in in interfaces, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I was talking about that with my son the other day. I said, you know, just looking at this, most, you know, sci-fi today, it has to be so mind-blowing because we have most of the stuff that we've been looking at for the past 20 years that's supposed to be in the future. Yeah. Um, but, you know, supposed to be 200 years in the future, 500 years, and we have most of it. Mm, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Do you get a lot of inspiration from... Um the series and what have you for ideas, you know, in, in the different uh, media that you put forward. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's trying to have fun with technology and, uh, and with nerd stuff, you know, but still uh, have some fun with it. Yeah. And I think, I think it's so important. You know, it's funny. I, I don't come from a tech background at all. Um, and um, so it's fascinating to me because I look through everything that you guys are, are pretty been involved with for a while with new eyes and it's fresh and exciting and what have you. And, um, you know, but it's funny, even, even in what I do, I've got, um, I suppose, absurd uh, idiosyncrasies and, and things. We, we actually live on the, on the coast and um, we've also got a couple of kids and uh, we all love water sports and surfing and kite surfing and, and what have you. Um, and I just wanted to ask you, you know, I've, I've got a, an absurd um, habit that people comment on when, when I go surfing and that I always put my board into the water in the shore break and then I splash the deck before I get in. And if I don't go through that ritual, um, it actually throws me off a little bit, even when I'm kite surfing with the, the bar in one hand and I put the, the board in the water and splash it and it sort of sets up my, my session. You're obviously a very technical guy. And do you have any habits or absurd things that, that rituals that you go through before you prep like Satoshi Sean or anything like that? Well, I, I am an absurd guy myself, um, but <laughs> there's nothing that really comes to mind right now. Um, but I think, I think a lot of those idiosyncrasies are subconscious. Whenever we do something and we did it well i think our brain remembers the, the little things that we did and we just wanted to make that reoccur so every time that's where you know where it comes from we just want to do it the same way that we did it that one time really well yeah i suppose you're right eh? that um, i suppose setting it up for success i think it's gonna mm -hmm. you know, just tip the scales the right way you, you know with um, crypto and um, blockchain Obviously, you're a real enthusiast, and you say you've been involved really passionately and actively for the last three years, but when did your interest actually start? Well, I mean, I, I, I guess I technically have my own Bitcoin pizza story. Um, it was years, I mean, like, uh, I think Bitcoin was under a dollar. It was a long time ago, and I have two sets of twins that I was a single dad and I used to buy my kids, you know, uh, shirts on the internet. These like, you know, quirky, goofy shirts. Okay. And this one, this one site called a uh, $6 shirts. 
they had you know like goofy sayings and you know uh they they really liked it but th this site took bitcoin it's okay. one of the like first sites that did and i'm like and i was what is this bitcoin and my son is like oh it's a digital currency and i didn't get it you know i'm like what do you mean you just can make it and you buy stuff with it that's fake and like no computing power I was like, yeah, so you make it on your computer. He's like, no, no, it takes all this money and energy and, and your, your power to make. And he was trying to explain it. I was like, this is weird. So I went through it. I don't know how many Bitcoin it was to, to get a $6 shirt with like $3 shipping. But I did that, and it was probably uh, it was probably at least 15 or 20 Bitcoin at that time to, to buy this. Um, and, it, and it was ridiculous to try and do it. It was, I said, this is, this was, I wanted to do this because it was like fun, some weird thing to do, but that was it. Um, and I, cause I didn't understand it at all. Yeah. Um, like people nowadays, uh, you know, when I try to explain anything blockchain or, uh, or with crypto to my friends, people that I feel are smarter than me, you know, they get this glazed look, mm -hmm. I just smile, that. you know, um, but I, I just ignored it. I mean, I didn't mess with it. And then I saw it, you know, uh, you know, it going up, and just finally I gave up on trying to understand it. I I looked at it from an investment standpoint, from a speculative standpoint, as that was my background. And I said, this is an asset. This yeah. is something that's tradable. This is something that's going up. This is something that people, you know. And then once I just gave up and got into it, that's when. You know, y your eyes open up and you learn so much more about how blockchain works, um, you know, how Bitcoin works, the tokenization like you've done with, uh, with uh, English Forward with the, the yeah. gamification and tokenization of the learning, um, which I've always thought, and which I said on the Cryptopolitan many times, that I think that education is literally one of the best uses for blockchain. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. So tell me, did you did you end up buying that shit? But did I end up buying what? The shit. The six dollar shit with, with uh, Yeah, I did. Oh, I did. <laughs> your accent. Yeah, I thought you were cussing yeah. at me. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yo, yeah, I bought it, and it was, but it was such a pain to to get the currency and to send it and all that. It was, I was like, this was fun, but you know, no, this took like you know, like two days to buy it. So I was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Enjoy your shirt. Next time we'll just use my credit card. Um, yeah. And that's, that's why I just kind of ignored it. But if I wouldn't have, I would just, I mean, I was aware of it, but I was too, uh, you know, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it as a, uh, as, as a science and how it works. Now it just seems simple, but yeah. But it's always like that, looking back at the um, beauty of 2020 hindsight. Eh? Yeah. So I've, I've seen, you know, you describe yourself as an entrepreneur and um, a crypto evangelist and investor. Um, I'd just like to unpack that a little bit so we can sort of understand uh, who, you know, Satoshi Sean is. What, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial background and how that actually got you into Hellas and, you know, being involved with blockchain and insurance. Well, um like I said, I'd been in insurance for years and years, um, mainly in the military market and federal employee market. Uh, so there had also been um, like nonprofit uh, organizations that I had worked with as well. Um, and I had been a, a you know managing general agent, a trainer, I had open agencies. Um, and uh, where are we going with this? <laughs> and then time, yeah. that brought me when I when I brought into when I got into crypto, I just saw that the uh, how it, how it was really going to change everything, you know, because um, you, you can see how things basically aren't working, and they haven't been working for a long time, uh, and it can't just keep going in that same direction, you know. That's kind of the definition of insanity: is just keep doing the same thing over and over again expect yeah. something different to happen Absolutely. so eventually it's gonna you know it's gonna it's gonna finally fail and i think uh i think that this is you know it's the future 
Yeah, it's it's right. So, you know, it's funny because when I look at it um, from an education standpoint, as you said, it's it's um, something there's a, there's a massive need there to um, to actually find a solution to. And um, I think she's really interested. You know, maybe you can give us a little bit of background with Hellas because the the connection between um, insurance um, and education and students there's there's definitely a direct link there. But I'd like to understand the business and you know, where Hellas is in the market. So if you could maybe just give us a bit of background, um, the products and, and you know, where you see it in the market. Well, we started Hellas um, right at the end of the, of the last bull market. We didn't have an ICO, we didn't have a cash grab because um, it's a solid, you know, solid project. Um, our, our app is out, you can, you know, download the app. Um, with insurance, it's very, very regulated very regulated by, by country, by state in the countries. Um, so we're right now, we're only in um, travel insurance and moving into small, small, appli not small appliance, like small purchases, like uh, insuring phones, uh, electronics, things like that. Is that um, in the U.S.? Yeah. And then we're trying to get a, in the U.S., it's a lot of money, you know, to, uh, to get licensed in each state. Um, so we're trying to find a way to, to go more country by country uh, as in an international um, medium. Um, as far as, uh, and so our, our token is tradable, we're built on the, uh, on A-Chain. Um, our, our token symbol is HUT, H-U-T. Yeah, okay. Uh, you can, you know, we check out all our social media. We Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that, um, or Telegram. As far as education, the one thing I wanted to, I wanted to, to talk to you about when I when it came to that, what kind of blockchain? Yeah. Um, I think that blockchain is 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 when it comes to education is the is a game changer that's never happened before to our species. Um, I had thought about this. If if you look at our our history. Of, of humanity um we seem to we seem to learn we seem to move forward and then something happens where we screw ourselves and we go backwards really wow. far yes that's amazing eh? i mean you can look at it, i mean it, you could say maybe atlantis that was that was you know there yeah. um but definitely like uh, the library in alexandria yeah you know there was so much knowledge that was there um that when it was attacked and burned, it literally was so it was centralized education. It was all the knowledge of the planet centralized yeah. so that one force could destroy it. Um, and then the dark ages and so on and so forth. So we seem to move forward and then something happens where we destroy our our knowledge, which sends us backwards hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. But the thing and, and, and I had had a conversation about this. Um, with my, my son, as a matter of fact, he said that we're, we're so much further ahead now that now, even if we do that, that it won't take us long to catch up. Um, I mean, you could look at the example of a, a farmer. If you have a farmer that was only a hundred miles away from the library of Alexandria, all this massive knowledge, but he didn't know anything about anything except for farming. You know, nothing about biology, nothing about medicine, nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. To where now the average person or the, you look at a farmer from today, he's going to know basically how the body works. He's going to know basic chemistry. He's going to know, you know, mathematics beyond, you know, what he would need for a farming. You know what I mean? Our knowledge level is so much higher that it, it, we would – we would adapt. We would come back faster. But the fact that if we, by putting our knowledge on blockchain, by decentralizing it, number one, it's immutable. So like history and things like that can't be yeah. tampered with or changed. That's a big thing. But also it can't be destroyed or lost. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, that's um, very important. But it's funny, you know, you, you say, I think, 
you know, as a species, when, when we go backwards, I, I find that even with myself is that individually we end up doing the same things because you, you progress in life and you end up going around in a circle. It might take you a couple of years. You might have a little bit more wealth or a bit more knowledge or something like that, but you sort of end back in the same place. So I think it's just indicative of how we are as people. Um, but the thing that I really like about um, blockchain and how it can actually support growth and exactly what, what your son says um, into the future is that um, it's not governed by individuals only. It's governed by a community. And generally, when you average that out, you're going to get a lot more sensible outcome than just by one person or one group of people that actually make the rules and, and implement them for their own gain. So I'm all for that. I think it's, that's a big plus for us. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree. I am, you know, with, with um, insurance um, and what you guys are doing, if, could you give me a practical example? If there was a student and they were going to travel from India to the U.S., and they lost their luggage, as you described. Um, what would the process be for them to actually go through? If they had your app and they were going to submit a claim, how would they actually go through that to get the benefit of what you guys um, propose? Well, they would have to um, get like proof of the uh, that it was lost, whether from the airline company or whatever. Um, and then they could submit that in the app um, whether through like a photo scan or um, email. And then, like I said, it would be uh, judged by the AI and then a smart contract would release the payment immediately to their, to their wallet. They could convert it to Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever and, uh, and be able to buy some new stuff. Okay, cool. I know, I know your website, it says that um, Hellas aims to return 100% of the premium of the purchase. How does that tie in with that? Well, not 100% uh, of the premium. Um, there would be, uh, you know, a portion that goes to the uh, to the maintenance of the uh, of the company. But it, I think it's like 80%. So that's pretty high because I mean, geez, the the traditional insurance model takes such a big bite out of the middle. Right. Well, there's that's the thing. There's so much that's uh, that's unnecessary and so much fat that can be trimmed um, when it comes to it yeah and i suppose that opens it up to um you know people that are unbanked and that don't have access or or come from marginalized communities or developing countries to actually get access to um insurance yeah and the same thing with uh, like car insurance we're looking for um i mean if you get into a car accident and uh, you could you know it, it is would be possible to have the claim done before you leave the accident. Um, you know, with, if you have pictures of your car and then, you know, you could take pictures of the damage. If the, the AI can see that they could, you know, offer a, uh, a settlement option. If you're fine, smart contract releases the funds to you. It would, it would be really, really cool. <laughs> um, so that's what we're, we're, we're striving towards to kind of bring insurance, you know, back to the people. Uh, where it is transparent, it is uh, it is easy um, because, like I said, there's so much of it that's not transparent, um, and the like I said, the laws are set up to where even if the I mean, because it is heavily, heavily uh, regulated, um, but it's also heavily lobbied, and uh, and it, I mean, everyone talks about like banks. But insurance companies own banks. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, huge. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, a friend of mine, Frank, was telling me a story when I first you know, discovered blockchain, and he's a blockchain engineer. And um, I think he just simplified it for me. But he, he said that at some point in the future, you'd go out with your wife and you'd come back after dinner and you'd park in the street and you'd go up to bed. And, um, and then, you know, somebody comes along and they bump your car. Um, and you fast asleep, but your car is a smart car. So it gets hold of the network, registers that it's had an accident. One of the street cams take a pic, 
and the whole process is recorded in the blockchain. The network sends an engineer out that's accredited. They take the excess, make the payment, pay the installer, buy the part, etc. And you wake up in the morning and you might not even know that you've had an accident, except that you get a notification. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, I suppose that's what you guys are looking at. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, with, uh, with AI, I mean, AI can be a little scary, I know. Um, but with AI and technology, that it, it really, um, things are moving so fast, faster than they ever have before. Uh, Tesla is coming out with um, a f their next fleet of cars, which, I mean, this is within the next two years. You can buy a car, you have you buy your Tesla, and then when you go go home, you go to bed, you can turn it on to where it's it's going to drive itself. See, that's but it can go, amazing, yeah. It can go be an Uber. <laughs> and, and it, yeah, seriously, it, it, it takes off. It's an Uber. It picks people up. It does that all. You can do it every weekend. And then uh, I think they're going to take 20% of the take. You get 80%. It goes to pay your bill first, and anything after the bill goes to you. Um, so you could wake up, you know, get out to the car, and you've been technically working all night. See, you could take the day off work and make more money than being at the job. You, you literally, <laughs> yeah, you could sit there and play video games and be like, I'm working. My car is out working. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. Sean, obviously in, in blockchain, the, the biggest thing or one of the biggest things is actually adoption and getting, you know, critical mass and, and what have you. And I just wanted to chat to you about some of the um, challenges in the actual insurance industry specifically with, with adopting it. I know there, there is a lot of legacy and as you say, massive companies um, with huge finances that actually control the industry. And how do you actually overcome the infancy of the, of the blockchain technology, number one? Um, there are not a lot of integrated solutions, obviously, now. And you've got a legacy um, system, I suppose, that's in place. So how do you... Well, I, mean, what, what, it, how do you it often? I think it's the, it's the old... It's, it's the old. <laughs> Nothing in blockchain is old. But it's the old saying that it's... Uh, people really want or adoption takes place when people are using blockchain, they don't know that they're using a blockchain. Yeah. All they want to do is use this app and it works better than this other app. Um, people understand automation. People understand AI. People understand I can, I can get paid quicker. I can have more transparency. I can see, you know what I mean? They understand that. Um, and when you tell someone, you know, you can get this insurance and then you have to submit a claim, you have to send things in the mail, You'd have to wait. They have this much time or this, as soon as the AI is satisfied with your claim, it would release the funds to you. Um, and with, uh, I think with Facebook coin coming out, um, in fact, they're releasing in India for their, uh, I think in the next month or two for their okay. pilot program. Um, it's going to introduce a lot of people to crypto. People, my friends that will not, touch crypto don't want to hear about it they're going to be using facebook coin in the next yeah. few months um so i mean adoption is coming yeah it's um, exciting that uh, it's um you know, rising tide lifts all ships and when the big guys get involved it changes yeah um but see the thing is i mean a lot of people talk about the centralization of facebook coin or uh you know, so on, so forth, different when the, when the big boys come in, like you said, but the thing is once people get into blockchain and cryptocurrency, it's kind of, you know, they see things for the first time. They understand how things work. Uh, you know, I, I, I just wouldn't get into it, wouldn't get into it. And then as soon as I did, Oh, it all, I see everything now. Mm. And you can see more of, you know, just how the banking system works, how it's been, you know, been, it's kept people down, the unbanked down. It's kept people in poverty. It's kept, you know, wars going on. Um, you can see that inflation isn't really a, isn't real. It's more of a deflation of the currency that you use. Um, you know, if if you still have, if there's a, a million oranges made in your state and that's more than enough oranges for everybody 
and if there's a, a freeze or a drought, so now there's only half a million oranges, then the price of oranges go up. That makes sense. Mm. But if there's a million oranges and then the next year there's still a million oranges, but they cost more, that's because the money has went down in value. Mm, that's exactly uh, right. It's just manipulation, right? Yeah. And people say, oh, the, you know, it's, it's, it's inflation. Like it's just some magic wand. They would, but no, it's because your money is worth less. Yeah. And I think when people get into crypto, even if it's Facebook coin, even if it's whatever, they start to learn a little bit more. Um, you know, they, they stop using Instagram uh, filters for a minute. And, uh, you know, they think about where their money is and where, how it works. Yeah, and it's exactly right. It's, it's, um, I think, yeah, you're right. Adoption will come when something becomes seamless and, and we all start talking about it and using it. Um, and it's funny, I suppose the same thing is on the insurance side. Have you found that uh, the larger companies um, are interested in what you guys are doing? And I know that they obviously you're going to be a threat to that whole industry, but in time, they would have to change their attitudes and their outlooks to a blockchain type application anyway. Yeah, well, it's definitely, um, it's the, you know, blockchain, not crypto. Uh, blockchain streamlines so much stuff, it really helps. Um, with a lot of aspects of, uh, of the business. So, uh, m you know, most companies are looking to adopt blockchain into their infrastructure, um, but more of a centralized, you know, blockchain system. Mm. And also things like with, uh, with insurance, there's a lot of like for the risk pool, like the medical information bureau and all those things, if that was put on blockchain and even tokenized to where, cause it, I mean, it, it, it it's a, uh, you still, most insurance, insurance companies still have to pay for that information. Mm -hmm. If they get an insurance claim, they have to check your, you know, your background, whether it's for a car, whether it's for your health or whatever, you know, they have to do that basic due diligence of investigation. Um, and that costs them money to where if it was all on a, on one blockchain, it would be cheaper, easier to get. Um, and it could even be tokenized to whatever, you know, um, whatever entity you're, you were dealing with. Mm. And and tell me with with expansion and just talking about bigger companies, um, obviously licensing is a is a very expensive thing. Do you partner with guys in expanding into different territories? Um, we're looking at that actually in the United States. Is we're uh, using partnerships to share licenses. Yeah, um, makes sense. That's 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 one thing that we're looking at to partner with a. Uh, agencies or companies and then kind of have them offer our services as you know part of the, as part of, under their umbrella and and I, I would imagine um because i'm just thinking about visibility and adoption not not just uh, but specifically in in your industry and then what we do in education is there's a there's obviously a massive need and in the future um i mean billions of people that are unbanked that solutions are coming to you that will start traveling that will you know utilize um, crypto and blockchain and how would that message get across to you know guys in those sort of communities like like what you guys are doing um you know it's interesting with with um with just going forward and and um and the actual marketing side what are your plans with with expansion like that well, we're about to start a, a much more aggressive marketing um, campaign now in the, in the latter part of the year. Uh, but I think that adoption is gonna is gonna come in in uh, in how do I put this in like the reality, real um, utility, day to day adoption. Adoption is going to come out of like Africa, um, the MENA region, you know, so, South South Asia. Um, I don't, I mean, I could say South America, but I think that's, that's really going to follow more with the rest of the Western world. I think that, a, that big adoption is going to come from the places that really need it and want it. You know what I mean? And I think that that is definitely more Africa, uh, Middle East and, and South Asia. And, and I'm just interested because it's obviously, it sort of plays along the lines of what I'm thinking about with English Forward is, is you know, dominating a niche market 
and then growing from there. I just, you know, I, I read that saying, if the user can't find it, it doesn't exist. So we've got a great product, you've got a great product. Um, with a continent, let's just take Africa, for example, it's a massive continent. Um, right. And I, I don't know, with marketing, have you guys thought about how you would tackle a, a continent like that? With um, Is it more of a niche approach or is it a partnership approach with guys? It is more of a, a niche, especially if you're looking at insurance with Africa, to be, to, we would have to really do a little bit more research on what is needed, what kind of insurance is, you know what I mean? And then, and then move into that um, to kind of tailor it to, because Africa is a special place um, to tailor, tailor it to the needs of, uh, of the continent. Um, but I think that with blockchain and crypto, it, it it's first, especially in Africa and uh, Southeast Asia and, and the Middle East, it's going to bring a lot of people out of their, out of poverty and out of their situation. Whether that I mean with education, obviously that's a huge, a huge thing that's going to help um, microfinance to yeah. the unbanked. Um, that's a, that's another massive thing. Cause there's, I mean, there's a, there's people that are making it. There's entrepreneurs and small businesses um, that are just, there's no way they could get a bank account. There's no way they could get a loan, but literally like a hundred dollars could, could triple their business with purchases right. of tools. Yeah. You, or, you, you know, how, it's exactly right. Uh, you realize how spoiled we are. And they're so, but they're so cut off yeah, that, yeah. you know, a hundred dollars just, it, it's would take them, you know, months and months and months or years to, to be able to take care of business and, you know, build that up. But by, you know, by having access to that, just because they have a cell phone, um, even if they don't have Wi-Fi, just to connect, you know, go somewhere and connect, they can uh, work that out with a uh, microfinance on the, on, a, on the blockchain. They could buy the tools that they need. They could do whatever. They could actually hire, you know, people in their village that they're, so that's, 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 uh, that's increasing, you know, employment, and it's increasing their their own wealth to where, like you said, eventually people will be traveling, people will be doing more, um, and people will know that it was because of you know crypto and blockchain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to ask you. I wanted to find out a little bit more about you and the way you think. I'm really interested in. You're obviously a. You've got an incredible amount of energy, Sean. You've got vision. You've got focus. You're involved in multiple different businesses. You produce stuff for your channels, you do interviews, et cetera, et cetera. What motivates you? I mean, what really gets you going and gives you the energy to maintain that high level of, of output? I don't know. That's a compliment because it's almost four in the morning here. So <laughs> I have energy. That's pretty cool. Um, honestly, I mean, since I found crypto and got into it and, and blockchain, I'm very passionate about it. You know, uh, everyone tells me, I don't understand what you're saying, but I really enjoy you saying it. Yeah. Um, it I, besides being a, like a single dad, there's nothing that's really it, in my life that I've ever felt that passionate about. Um, you know, whether it's work or whatever, it's, you know, I'm going to do this. It's a, it's a good job. It's, you know, this is, this has security, this, you know, what, but I've never been really passionate about anything until I found this. Um, so I really can't tell you what it is. Just it's that when everyone tells you, you find that thing that you love and that you're passionate about. And I did. Well, I'll tell you what I can, I can hear it. It's, um, it's actually inspiring to me. I'm making notes and things. Here. I mean, it's, it's awesome to chat to you. Um, just a little bit about, um, Satoshi Sean and your channel and and I mean I, 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 I've looked at a lot of your videos um, I subscribe to the channel um, a lot of the stuff was high grade for me and a bit above my pay grade but um, how do you come up with the concepts and and the message and the things that you actually want to communicate to the guys that are listening well I really started the Satoshi Sean channel I started uh, my kids have a, have a YouTube channel they have like a pop culture, video games, all that. Um, they're, you know, super hundred percent all into it. And I was into crypto and I just was tired of, uh, 
the same thing. Everyone talking about the same project or the yes. same. And it was, and then it was also tired of people saying things that were stupid or wrong. Um, and it was frustrating. Uh, and then, but no one would talk about like, uh, I thought things that were uh, interesting or valuable. Uh, it's so I, I, um, I started one night. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to just make a video here. I got some free software and, uh, you know, I did a video and then I just would go over, I mean, it was just personal. Like, I, I don't care if anybody watches it. This is this, this, I think this is really cool. Here's what it's about. Like buzz coin. Yeah. It's, it's tiny little, uh, small cap coin, but the technology and science behind it is amazing. They make these, uh, hardware of these, um, like, uh, beehives, but they're completely digital. Okay. Um, and they're trying to like save the bees of the world, how important bees are to the ecosystem and everything. But these, these, uh, and they're solar powered. It's, it's a beehive that's completely solar powered. It, it, it has, it takes like air samples, samples of the honey, weight of the bee, it, all this data that it puts on their chain. And then it can be shared with beekeepers in, you know, Brazil to Norway, wherever. Um, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really, and they've developed this, and it, nobody talks about it. It's you know because they're they're not pumping out tons of money. Um, Space Chain, that's one of my favorite ones. I, that's an amazing project. Uh, yeah, it's amazing, and it's got I mean uh, Jeff Garzik's on it, Tim Draper. I don't know why it's uh you know so sick, but they have they have spaceships in orbit. I know it's incredible. Eh? <laughs> and, and nobody talks about it. Um, so it, I just wanted to go over stuff I thought was interesting. And then it, you know, started to get a following. And, um, but then I just started the, the news channel, the Cryptopolitan. That's more like every day, just kind of going over uh, news from the Cryptopolitan website. Um, I was working for, uh, for Xbox for the past few years. Um, and I just, I stopped doing that. And I'm, now I'm just going full-time crypto and, uh, and blockchain. So how do you how do you set your day up? I mean, you you obviously got to produce content every single day for these channels. Mm -hmm. Do you have daily rituals or things that you think are sort of integral to your success and how you? I mean, you you're up at four in the morning. You're a dedicated fella. Yeah, it's uh, the sleep schedule is a little weird because you know, <laughs> and what you know, you're talking to people that are all over the world. Um, I mean, it gets a little tiring. Everyone's like, "Good morning." I'm like, "No, it's." <laughs> it's not good morning. I'm, it's two in the morning. I'm about to go to bed, man. I mean, people are like, why do you sleep all the time, Sean? I'm like, I'm not sleeping all the time. You come in here at like three in the morning. I'm going to get like four hours sleep. I sleep with one eye open. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, I just, uh, you know, kind of, that, that's another thing I like about it. It's uh, there is no super strict regiment. You know, you get up, check your telegram, check some stories uh check the market um and then kind of make a plan and you can you know go from there it's not it's not that 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 strict or, or rigorous uh like it, you know like life was before yeah it does give you a certain amount of flexibility um i've, I've also found that um, just working with guys in different parts of the world you have to be a bit more flexible yeah <clears throat> but it's it's always interesting to chat to guys that are successful like yourself because you know, with, with all the new stuff that's coming out, blockchain, ed tech, and, you know, the new insurance stuff, AI, et cetera, um, and, and the way things are developing, because they develop so fast, it creates lots of challenges. And, and often I find that I get faced with, like, difficulties, and I, I feel like I get boxed in, and I've got to really figure out a way to get out of a corner. Have you got any, any sort of things that you do? I mean, when you get stuck, what do you do to doing about 10 and um, to find a solution to those problems? Well, I'm, I'm a very logical guy. Just kind of sit down, look at the problem from, you know, all different areas and then, uh, and then try to make a plan on how to fix it and, and, and go, I don't try not to get frustrated with it um, or let it, let it, like you say, get boxed in or let it take over, try to take a step back. And then, uh, and then just reevaluate it. 
Yeah, that's that's. I think it's going to be an ongoing challenge. And I, obviously, if you're a, if you're a problem solver, it um, it actually creates the opportunities because that's what where most people get stuck is they they bump into a problem and it's overwhelming and they they let it go and they don't figure a way around it. So uh, hats off to you, man. That's cool. Um, so I just wanted to ask you. I mean, if if we had to, and this is a bit of a, a prediction. Um, so I won't hold you to it in five years' time, but just give us a snapshot of, of what you think the future will look like for the intersection of blockchain, insurance, and education, and how you think Hellas can actually impact or play a part in that. Five years? All right, make, make it a year. <laughs> five well, years. I think when it comes to especially education, I think education has changed so much, at least in the United States, where it's uh, with, just with the, the advent of, of the internet. I mean, forget about blockchain, forget about all that. Just the internet has changed it dramatically to yeah. where people realize that what's important is the knowledge. Uh, I mean, if you, if you learn what one plus one is, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter who taught you. It doesn't matter where you learned it at. Um, it doesn't matter the history of the building that you learned it at. To, you, you know what I mean? Which is what was so much so much more important. Mm -hmm. I think you know Elon Musk once again. He said it. I don't really care about where you got your degree from. Or I don't care about your degree. You know, if you know how to do the job, if you have the knowledge, that's what's important. Not that I paid hundred thousand dollars for my education and you paid fifty. Yeah, it, it, you know, it doesn't really matter anymore, and I think more people are realizing that mm. uh, with just education being open to everyone, um, and with blockchain, it it's going to lower the barriers even further mm. than the internet did already. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be exciting. I I kind of envy you on that. It's going to be an exciting thing to see. Um, yeah, we, as far we're looking forward to that, actually. As far as with uh, with insurance, I think blockchain is going to be key to uh, to all business. You know, like like uh, like the internet is now. You know, um, so much is so much business is done on the internet. Even in a, I mean, you can have a small company that's you know, and in, in a thousand square foot or two thousand square foot building. And people still send emails to each other. You know, you're not you're not running around or calling or using intercoms. You're just sending instant messages. You know, everything is so electronic now. I think that's how blockchain is going to be mm. utilized in it within the future, just in business in general. Um, but then with the use of smart contracts, uh, there's so much that that's going to going to clean up, and and so much uh, basically fat that it's going that it's going to trim off of uh, the insurance industry, other industries, because um, so many small things are gonna be able to just be taken care of without, uh, you know, without without that human interaction of like verifying it, because it's all, it's a basic smart contract. Mm. You know, it's all verified there. Um, I think it's gonna cut down on, you know, fraud, which is a huge cost to any, any industry, you know, fraud is, it's always a big, one of the biggest costs, whether it's retail, whether it's insurance, um, anything, you know, fraud is always up there as one of the largest costs of, yeah, of a, a company. Massive negative and, in the business. Yeah, and blockchain, is, it, it, I mean, it doesn't fix it, but it makes it so much easier to find, so much more transparent mm -hmm. that it's hard to get away with it. So it's mm -hmm. going to cut a lot of that out. And all of those, all of those, uh, all those things will be passed on to consumers. Yeah, it's, um, it certainly does paint a much brighter future for all of us. Like Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, we've, and we've come full circle. <laughs> we've come full circle. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> Just as a, a last sort of a takeaway for the guys that are listening, there are obviously a lot of people that are really excited about the space, um, about blockchain, about cryptocurrency, um, and you know some aspiring entrepreneurs people wanting to get into the space 
What advice would you have for guys that are starting out now, looking to the future, wanting to get involved, and um, what would you say to them? Do your own research, <laughs> what everyone always says. Yeah. But yeah, do your own research. Um, just uh, you know, really sub submerge yourself in the in the space. Um, go to more uh, when it comes to learning to the uh, to the leaders of the industry, not the not the Schillers. Um, if you look at like uh, Antonopoulos, um, he I I I love Andreas Antonopoulos. I think he's a. Uh, it actually took some of his courses from. Uh, um, He's my professor at the uh, University of uh, Nicosia. Okay. Um, but uh, just, you know, just learn and, and don't ever think you know everything. Just constantly be learning. Yeah, cool, man. Thanks. Hey, Sean, um, our time's just about up. And I just wanted to say thanks so much. I really, really enjoyed chatting, man. You're an interesting guy. And uh, All right. really easy to, to speak to. And just wanted to say thank you for getting up at 3 a.m. And, and having a chat to me. It was fun. It was fun. Glad yeah, to be here. It was a lot of fun. I'll certainly be following you as um, you progress and really looking forward to seeing what you're doing with your channels and with Hellas. So good luck and thanks again. Appreciate it. All right. Take Cheers. care, y'all. Okay, fine. You were listening to an English Forward production the web's largest Learn English community and Q&A site. Everything you need to understand and improve your English. Visit EnglishForward.com.